Welcome to The Daily Dish with New York Times bestselling author, Leanne Ely. Putting vibrancy back into your everyday life and feeding your heart, mind, body, and soul. Join us every day at 1 p.m. Eastern for Motivational Monday, Tuesday's Tip, Wise Woman's Wednesday, Thirsty Thursday, Food Fight Friday, and of course, Q&A, where no question is off limits, and Soulful Saturday. Here is your host, Leanne Ely and The Daily Dish. You are here. I can't believe it. Hi. <laughs> after all of that, after the big gala, there's Patsy, Vanessa, Catherine, already in the house. Very good to see you. Thanks so much for showing up. Wasn't that fun last night? Those of you who were here. There's Mary Ann and Marguerite. Angie, I saw you all last night. Wasn't? Did we not have a good time? Joanne's in the house. Good to see you. Past birthday, birthday girl from yesterday. Carla's here. I see Jocelyn as well. Noreen, who won our big ticket to come to Full Bloom in person. Isn't that great? Marguerite won the big nutritional con consult. Lisa's here. Flynn's here. Yay, it's time for another party. We had so much fun last night. And Noreen, I thought of you when we played This Is Me twice. <laughs> I completely thought of you. And I could hear you singing in my ear, which was lovely. Hi, Kathy. Good to see you. And Jackie. Hello, 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 hello. Anyway, um, we are back on our regularly scheduled programs, um, of course. And wow, what a, what a time we had with the gala. Thank you for making it so successful. We really, uh, you really, you blew us away with um, how responsive you were. You blew us away with how much you played full out just getting dressed. I mean, we had Lynn and Sarah dressing up for each segment. I, we couldn't believe we just had the best time with it all. Hi, Jen. I'm glad you're here. Samantha Beverly Corliss. I got your question for Friday, so make sure you turn, tune in. Um, Noreen's starting to practice This Is Me today. Well, guess what? You're going to sing this because I'm getting a karaoke machine. I am. I'm going to figure out this karaoke thing when we have full bloom. <laughs> When we have full bloom, because if we could do full, wouldn't that be fun to have karaoke after we're done with our big uh, workshop? Mm. Jerry's here. I know you're working, so you'll have to watch later. But Jerry, let me just say this. Friday, I'm going to answer your question as well. Um, I thought it was, yeah, Joanne said she thought it was so cool that they all dressed up and changed costumes all the time. So it really was a blast. Martha, I'm glad you're here. We just had so much fun. If you saw all of our, we did Crowdcast in the evening and we did Facebook, the normal Facebook route um, during the day. And we did Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, Tuesday afternoon, just like this. And then Tuesday and Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. We did it on Crowdcast. I believe you can go watch it if you want to, but, oh, you'll need some singing helpers. I'm here to help, Maureen. Here to help. <laughs> you don't want to hear me sing anymore. Once upon a time, I could do it. Nowadays, I can carry a tune. That's pretty much it. But you know what? We will have fun. And that's what it's all about. But we're going to be talking about making magic today because that's our theme of the week, even though we missed two days because of the gala. Who cares, right? Who cares? Karaoke will be such a blast. So, um, hey, Jenny, go find me a karaoke machine. I don't know what that mean, what it means to get one. Never done that before in my life. Um, you know what? Who knows? Maybe somebody's got one they can stick it in their car. If you do, do that. Anybody who's coming, <laughs> I know you're on it. Of course you are. <laughs> it's so much fun. Anyway, um, we had a blast. The gala was a huge success. You were a huge success. You dressed the part. You showed up. And the very best part, it was fully 100% razzle-dazzle all the way. We had a blast. You got to see the team. You got to see, you got to see everything. We really, uh, it was something else. So I don't know. I just, I'll tell you what, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, the whole thing for me was, it was one of the most fun times that I had. And I could have gone another hour or two seriously because we were just having that much fun. And I, and true to form, when I was done, I came up stairs and Mark was home and I said, okay, Pop open that stuff. I want 
I want my I want my MTV. No, I, I want my Prosecco. So I had a nice big glass of Prosecco. Uh, we watched a little bit of TV. I was just too talkative. I couldn't, you know, really concentrate on anything. And uh, played with the dog. And then, you know, it was bedtime. And then it finally caught up with me. But you know, I'll tell you, it was one of the it was one of the funnest nights we've had. And I can't wait for Full Bloom happening. In, in just eight weeks. Can you believe that? Can you do, can you believe that? Hey Flynn, I'm glad you're here. Easy, 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 easy to figure out, right? All you have to do is go to savingdinner.com forward slash bloom. We will have physical tickets available for the next week or so. We're going to be cutting them off shortly because we got to, we got to get it done, right? We got to get it done. It's time to make, uh, time to make those, those definite, plans. You know what I'm talking about. We gave away so many good things. We gave away uh, tickets. We gave away our new skincare. Did you see the Vibrant C plus E? So much fun. And I put it on my face, you know, today. Of course I did. You know, it's just, it's like silk going on your face, satin, whatever. It's fabulous. You're going to love it. I can't wait for you to get it. You know, we're going to be packing orders. I am going to ask for your patience. Um, it's going to take us a while to get everything out the door. And there are 10 women who went above and beyond. And I'm going to tell you, they they ordered, if not all, nearly all, and sometimes duplicate um, flash sales. And what we're going to do, I've got something that I'm going to put into your box that not only is going to surprise and delight you, um, it's going to be it's going to be a warm thing from a thank you from me to you. So I'm just letting you know that if that was if you were one of them, you will know because there will be a little something, something in there. Here is our quote of the week. Your life isn't yours if you constantly care about what others think. Isn't that the biggest truth in the world? That's a truth bomb. Boom. Did it just drop? Did it just land? And you know what else? I say not only is it not yours, but you're giving it all away. You're giving it away. You are volunteering your life to somebody else. It's crazy. We don't need to be doing that anymore. We just need to be stepping in to the life that we've been giving and starting to discover and see our own magic. That's what we've been talking about this week. We don't have a supplement of the week this week. Surprise. <laughs> and the reason why is because of the gallop. So what we've done is for the next 12 hours, we have enough product that we can do this. We are reopening all of those specials that we had, those flash sales, simply because we had some people who muffed up the, the thing. We had to start over with their with everything. And because we're already in the mode of correction, <laughs> we thought we'd, we'd open it back up. So for 12 hours, you have the opportunity to go to the page, savingdinner.com forward slash gala. That's where we parked all the specials and go ahead and take a look at what's there. Go grab it now, because I will tell you at the end of 12 hours, those will all be gone. There are gala specials. They come uh, very infrequently, you know? So the last time we did this was in February, six months ago. Well, we're not doing a gala every week. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? I, I'd be on the floor, you'd be mopping the floor with me. <laughs> it's just a lot. Um, the other thing that I wanted to tell you about is we have on Monday coming, right now we're in the middle of our collagen, well, the collagen challenge starts next week, but then week after that, we start our Get Strong Challenge. We already did our collagen challenge webinar. Wasn't that interesting? Fascinating information. This Get Strong webinar is all about getting strong. You know, I, I shared with you a quote that I read somewhere on Facebook and how it just, it kind of blew me away. And that was this whole idea of how we need to stop talking about getting skinny. We need to stop talking about all this, you know, getting smaller stuff and instead step up into the greatness of who we are. And that means to be a strong, confident woman. Strong and confident go hand in hand. And there is something about physical strength that makes you feel stronger inside. I don't know. There's just some kind of a weird connection there. Um, I can't tell you exactly what it is, but I'm going to tell you right now, you need to go get signed up for this. It's savingdinner.com forward slash strong. Yeah, that's where it is so that you can get included in on this webinar. And let me just say it's on Crowdcast and um, 
I might have a, some music or, or two or three to play <laughs> over there. We had an absolute party uh, for the gala last night and I, I'll never forget that. So if you don't mind me chair dancing, I know you're chair dancing with me or even getting up and dancing. Uh, we'll party at this webinar, you know, pinkies up. That's how we roll, right? <laughs> it was fun. Um, the other thing that I have to tell you is, is that our, our um, Q&A, we're set for tomorrow. You can't send in questions right now. We're set for tomorrow, but you can get them in for the following Friday. Send them in to support at savingdinner.com. Question for Leanne on Friday goes right there in the subject line so that I can get, an I can answer that. This week, you're going to want to hear the Friday, um, the Friday Q and A. We got some really good questions in this time, so we usually do. And I've also got to, if I remember my food fight thing, I've got a food fight thing you are going to love. Okay, pinkies up. There it is. Yes, 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 yes. So today we're talking about this whole idea of magic. Oh yes, there it is. SavingDinner.com forward slash bloom to get your ticket. I want more people here for the in-person event because I'm, I'm telling you, it really is going to be something absolutely spectacular that you will never forget as long as you live. That's how important it is. I'm just letting you know. We also have our virtual tickets. They will stay on sale all the way to the end, but the physical ones will be cut off shortly. I'm just letting you know. We've got to, we've got to get our plans solidified. So as I was thinking about this whole thing, and it kind of sparked because I'm cleaning up my office in a way that isn't just, you know, I've thrown a whole bunch of stuff in my uh, boxes and what have you in, in my closet with the idea of I will get to it. Well, you know how that goes. And it, it looks relatively decent in here, but there's piles everywhere, but it's neat piles. <laughs> Look at how I'm rationalizing my mess. But it's neat piles, and I'm just the worst when it comes to stuff like this. If you go upstairs into my where I live, you know, where in my home, and you open any drawer, any closet, anything, you're gonna see things clean and organized, bed made, pillows on the couch, fluffed with a karate chop right in the middle. Sure, everything's in order. I take great, you know, a great deal of pride in that, and take a lot of time with that. But when it comes to my office, I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. Well, I'm just going to stack it right here and put it right here on the end of this desk. And this goes with that, so I'll keep this here too. Well, I've got about 15 of those piles. And that's that's just this weird place in my mind that says, hey, I don't want to organize that. You know, I don't want to deal with that. So I recognize and know for me that this is an area of weakness. This is an area that I'm not going to have my strength. This is an area where I can't exactly make magic. I can't. This is, or, or it's someplace that I'm not willing to invest the time into learning how. And that's okay. I've got other things that I can do. I've got other talents that I have and capabilities and et cetera. So that, you know, when, when you get to that apex, if you will, you, you can make a decision of saying, you know what, I am going to allow somebody else who this is their thing. They get all a buzz when you start saying this is what it is. And they say, oh, I know exactly what to do with that. You know, and I've hired this woman named Marcy and you will meet Marcy who will be at our event in full bloom. And she lives right here in Brevard. And she's just, you know, she's she's a great woman. I really I really like her. And so Marcy's going to fix it all for me and teach me. <laughs> That's what she thinks, but I, she, she is going to teach me. <laughs> so, but when we're looking in, in, inside of ourselves and we're making a decision that we're going to make magic in our lives, that we're, we're going to stop with the fear because that one book that I read and that's what started this all off is a book that I read back in 2015 called big magic. And it's a uh, big magic, creative living beyond the fear, which I never even picked up on what the secondary part of the title was until I saw this sitting in that closet that's going to be handled next week. Right. So I thought about this for a minute and I thought, 
you know what? That's exactly what it is, is when we have the expectation of magic in our lives, when we have the expectation that we can creatively work our way through the fear, instead of being paralyzed by it, we can compartmentalize it and say, okay, this is the fear. This is the container with which I'm going to put my fear so that I can start working on this other stuff. Otherwise, fear is just like, it's like cancer and it has tentacles and it just, it just spreads and metastasizes. We have to contain it. We have to contain the fear so that we can move around it <laughs> and, and, and start creating some other things. Because I believe with all of my heart that fear really never goes away. We always have some fear. It's just how it's a coping me mechanism on how we deal with it. And for most of us, for the most, for most of our lives has been denial of that fear or avoidance of that fear or fear of the fear to, to actually confront it. So if we want to make magic in our lives, then we have to look beyond all of that. And we have to start seeing that we do have the ability to have a creative life that is beyond all this fear. Does that make sense? I, I, to me, this all clicked in. It all clicked in. And it's so funny because I read this book six years ago, but it had a profound impact on me because I saw the magic of serendipity. I saw the magic of magic. I saw the magic of the reticular activating system bringing in all that goodness that you want in your life and how just a shift in thinking can dramatically alter your course <laughs> and your fate even. It's that profound. So as I'm telling you all of this, which I think is um, really important stuff, I made a list of seven things and I, I started thinking about courage and creativity and magic and how these things all weave together. And I came up with seven things that I think are going to be um, exciting for you. So you want to want to get a list out. Anybody who takes notes, de definitely these will be on our notes, uh, show notes. So if you're not already on our newsletter email list, you need to be. Go to savingdinner.com and you'll get a little pop-up. Annoying, I agree. But you just fill that out and you'll immediately get put onto our list. So you'll get today's show notes in tomorrow's email. Okay, that's what we do. And we do this because it sometimes it helps to repeat things. I don't know about you, but I want to hear it. I want to see it. And I also want to read it because that's what makes an impression. And that's what instigates the change that I'm looking for. So here you go. So the first thing that we need to know about making magic is that we need to acknowledge our creativity. Now, I've got some big, tough things to say about this. And, um, you know, maybe you're not going to like it. But maybe you're going to say, whoa, but guess what? You know, this is my opinion <laughs> and I get to share it with you. And however you want to, however you want to handle it is how you want to handle it. OK, and just remember that sometimes when we get a little annoyed or we don't like what someone's saying, it's something that we really need to be listening to. And that's this. We have to acknowledge our creativity. We I have heard over and over and over and over again, I've heard people say, I'm just not creative. And I'm going to tell you what I think that is. I think that is a slap in the face to God himself. Because who created you in the first place? Who created you in the first place? And we're going to talk about what creativity is and what it isn't in a little minute. But I just want you to grasp when you say something that you don't have, it's because you haven't looked. I'm just putting it out there. And I'm not talking about artsy craftsy stuff at all. I'm not. I'm talking about creatively living your life. Creatively. Creatively means that you're outside of the box. Creatively means that you're solution oriented. Creatively means that you understand and you hold on to the meaning of the fact that you're here and that you have been given this beautiful, graceful chance to live a beautiful and graceful and full life, if only you choose that. And that's what creatively, creatively uh, forces us to do. We have to remember that your aliveness is 
on is is God's hand on your on your whole being. It's God's hand, and it's His creative brilliance in creating you in the first place. So I am not creative. No, we never say that. We never say that because that's that's saying that we're not acknowledging He who created us. If that makes sense, that's how I look at it. So number one is that we have to acknowledge our creativity. We have to acknowledge it. We have to acknowledge that we have it, even if we don't know what it looks like. And you're, I mean, everyone should say, well, you know what? I'm creative because I was created by God, but I have no idea what that means. Cool. Because now we have a starting place, don't we? <laughs> I think that's the best part. When we have a starting place, we know what to do next. We do know what to do next. We ask. We simply ask, show me my creativity. Show me my capacity for being creative. And again, we're going to define creativity in a way that I, maybe you've never done before. And maybe we should do that right off the bat because I have it on the other page. But creativity is the act of turning new and imaginative ideas into reality. And I'm going to share with you, you know, we just put a house under contract for my daughter, Caroline, and her husband. And do you know that deal was creative? It didn't happen in normal terms. It didn't happen the way most mortgages and buying a house happen. You know, Mark represented us. He's a, he's a licensed realtor. He represented us. So that was great. He was able to, we were able to get, you know, money off and discounted and all of that. Yeah. Isn't that exciting, Marianne? And can I just tell you, she's going to be in Hendersonville. That's right next to Brevard. So she'll be like 30, less than 30 minutes away. I am out of my mind happy. And it happened because it was wanted and desired. And instead of saying why we couldn't have something happen, we started to say, what can we creatively do in order to make this happen? You get me with all of this? Because creativity is always the answer to things that you can't figure out. Creativity is always the answer. Instead of retreating and going away and saying, I can't do it, creativity is the answer. It always is, always, 100% of the time. It's a creative new way of thinking about something. And that, my friends, is absolute 100% magic. It is. Number two is, this will blow you away too, is finish what you started. Finish what you started. And this one was the one that hit hard for me because I was flipping through the book and looking at all the different things. Finish what you started because um, there's a story in there that Elizabeth Gilbert tells in Big Magic about starting the story and then not doing, not finishing it up and putting it away because she had to go to Europe. And I've, I've told this story before. And then she meets somebody who starts telling a story that is very much like the story that she was telling in detail. And there's no way anybody saw it. So no way she could have seen the manuscript. No way, no way, no way. But what the, the, the point was there is that if you don't do it, then God will assign it to someone else. That's what it is. And you lose the magic by not finishing what you started. And so that just hit me really hard with my, you know, the carousel of crazy. It's ready to go, but I keep saying, oh, I know that there's something else. I know that there's something else. And I think we've got that something else worked out, but the carousel of crazy is on its way. And number two, finish what you started is what absolutely sealed the deal for me when I was looking at this because and for those of you who were part of my workshop for the journal the take back your life journal you know that's one of the thing one of the goals that I made I am industrious and creative and finish the projects that I start that's what I have in there because I'm what you consider a quick start uh, I have this weird entrepreneurial gutsy mentality that very very few people have that when I did one of these personality tests um, and I love starting things. I love um, the ideas. I love the magic of all of it, but following through and, and finishing things up is a weak part for me. It's like organizing my office, you know, that's fine. You know, it's so funny when I, I used to really have a hard time admitting that. And now it's just like, that's, and not that it's a badge of honor, but that's just a part of who I am. And, you know, I work with people who understand that about me, thankfully, and they don't hold it against me. You know, they pick it up. You think, you know, you think when you see a product that we've put out, 
the chances are really good that I, I probably started it. And then 90% of it was done by the rest of our crew. You know, that's how we roll. And it's so, it feels so good to be able to just hand something off and know excellence is on the way. They're going fi to finish all this up because they're operating in their strengths and they allow me to operate in mine. That's a part of what this is. Isn't that just so cool? Number three is, I love this quote from Elizabeth Gilbert. Get this, perfectionism is fear dressed up in fancy shoes and a mink coat. <laughs> I love that because perfectionism struts her stuff around and just sit and trying to be all fancy about it and trying to be all, well, it's just not right yet. And I just, you know, like snooty, snooty, snot, snot, right? <laughs> you get it. And, and really it's fear, fear of following through, fear of finishing this up, fear of what's this going to mean when it's all done, fear of going all the way through to the end and getting it finished. Procrastination is constipation. I'll tell you that. I, I always say that. It is the ultimate form of life of constipation. Things don't get done. Things don't happen in your life. Things are stuck, literally. And when we have that in our life, no wonder there's so much frustration. No wonder there's so much angst. It doesn't need to be that way. Just simply letting go of that and just say, you know what? It's better to just get it done. It's better to finish what I've started. It's better that done is better than, than not done. It's true for most things. You don't want your surgeon to say that. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when we're talking about something, it's, you know, one of the most freedom loving things that I get when I was working my way through the whole fly lady system 21 years ago or, or whatever, when I first started on this before the website, before everything. And you know our story, how I was a freelance writer and I interviewed her, right? That's how we became friends. And um, because I found the system to just be so miraculous. But the thing was, is she just broke it down and she made it easy. She said, just vacuum the middles. And I was like, holy cow, no, you gotta, you gotta go in here, you gotta lift things, you got, you know, that's how I was taught by my perfectionist mother, right? And my mother just, that's, she just wanted things done right. <laughs> we all have mothers like that, didn't we? Most of us have mothers like that. It just needed to be done. And just vacuuming the middles, you know what that was? That was, that was the letting go of that perfectionism and just getting it done. And that launched everything for me. Then I threw some routines in and I was done there. I got it. I got it. Click, click, click. And that's what it's all about. And that's when we tap in to automatic pilot for all of this stuff so that we can get on with our lives, so that we can step into the greatness of who we are, get rid of the perfectionism, drop ourselves into our own creativity and start creating magic in our lives. Tell me that doesn't lead to vibrancy. <laughs> you just, you will never, ever, ever convince me, you know? You will never convince me. Danielle says she's married to a finisher. That's so good. That's so good. Vanessa says she needs to hear this. She's going through this. Vanessa, girlfriend, I get it. You know, we're all in this together. Have you noticed this? It, it's a common thread. We've all been hit with this. We've all have some kind of perfectionism and some kind of fear. And remember, perfectionism and fear just pretty much are the same thing. It's just dressed up in <laughs> fancy shoes and a mink coat. But I like to see, here's my glass of hot milk mix. I say, contain the fear, put it in this container and allow it to be. We can deal with it one little sip at a time, if you will. We can deal with just a little tiny bit at a time. It doesn't need to be the overwhelming thing that we allow it to be. Because if you think about it, where does fear really dwell? In our brains. And in our brains, that's when we go through it and go through it and go through it and make ourselves crazy. You know, it's just, it's nutsy. It is so crazy. It doesn't need to be. All we need to do is make a decision that the fear that we have is, is common. We all have some kind of fear. You know, some people more than others, sure. 
But the whole point of it is it can be contained and we can work around it and then we can work on it, the fear, a little bit at a time. Doesn't that just give you so much freedom? I think it's just like the best, the best. <laughs> Lisa said she needs fiber mender for life. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love it. Yes, Marianne, exactly. We need mental fiber mender, don't we? It's so true. It's so true. Uh, number four is instead of fear, instead of saying, okay, well, here's my containment of fear. I'm just going to sip on this all day long. How about we say, okay, here's my container of fear. I'm going to put it over here. And instead, I'm going to start sipping from this cup, which has instead my tea of curiosity. Listen to me for a minute on this. Curiosity can be your guiding force because curiosity always asks questions. What does curiosity lead us to? Except our own brilliant creativity, right? Because we understand that creativity isn't about arts and crafts for heaven's sakes. Certainly there's creativity involved there. Creativity is about the way we view the world and the way we solve our problems. That's what it is. Can you feel the freedom in, in that statement? Are you seeing that that means, aha, the possibilities are there, the solutions are there. I just need to start putting it out there that I'm ready to receive them. Hmm? What do you think about that idea? I love this. I love this so much because curiosity can be the guiding force. Curiosity is the teacup we need to be drinking from. And fear's got its container. Fear has its place in our lives, doesn't it? Everyone has it. It just doesn't have to be overwhelming. It can be contained is the whole deal. Okay. So what do we do for that? I've got two questions that I like to ask myself to help stir the pot, if you will, for curiosity. And that is like, well, what if I did this instead? What if we did, this? ask Jenny. This is what, we, Jenny and I talk like this when we meet. We were like, well, what if we did this? Well, what if we did that? Can you imagine? Wouldn't it be great if that is the solution language to getting you to the place that you want? What we do, though, is that well, that'll never work. And it's you hear you hear the get smart music da, 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 and all the doors slamming and shutting. And, and, and then you're in the, the cone of silence and listening to yourself think, you know. And for those of you who don't get the Get Smart reference, the rest of us do and are cracking up. <laughs> we cut ourselves off from everything if we are not opening the door to curiosity because curiosity will tag on to our creativity. Curiosity will help us to keep asking the right questions. And we use a question matrix. You know about that, right? We keep asking ourselves, well, why this? Why that? Why shouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? What if I did this? What if I did that? What is it that gets me to my real deep why? Because then that's a driving force in, in and of itself because of the strong emotional connection that we have to our why. All of this works together for good. All of this works together and knits together a solution-oriented perspective of our lives instead of just cutting ourselves off and doing the get smart thing again, you know? And a cone of silence. It, it, you might be silent on the outside, but on the inside, it is a chaotic mess in your head. And you're thinking, oh, no, instead of asking, well, what if I did this? You're like, well, what if something happens? And we get ourselves worked up and tightened up into a teensy weensy little ball, never opening up fully bloomed, fully blossomed and open to solution, creativity. It, is 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 sought that way creativity rains down and and fills that little blossom up and keeps you fully bloomed and vibrancy is is just absolutely the vibe the very high vibe and then there's number five which is um courage now i've been doing a little deep dive on courage because um as you know we're getting ready for our full bloom in just eight weeks. And um, it's going to be from fear to here and helping to find what our purpose is in life and getting rid of the fear, containing the fear, as opposed to sipping from the curiosity cup. 
is what it's all about. And then also sipping from the, the, the cup of curiosity. I just made that up right now. I hope that, I hope that works for you, that metaphor. But the thing is, is that I think courage is, is so interesting because, you know, brave is about being fearless, right? Brave is about being fearless. It's, it's these people who are just, they, they've got the armor on and they've got the sword and they're going ahead and it's just, they're fearless. And just, it's, they're amazing. They're the warriors in our lives. But courage is different. Courage is confronting, accepting, and, and going forward with the fear and taking fear in its little container with you. Acknowledging that it's there. It's a whole different thing. I love that curiosity and creativity instead of fear juice. That's so good. Um, that's what it's all about right there, isn't it? That is what it's all about because courage is what we need. And courage is something that is, I believe, is a seed that is deep within every single woman on this planet who has the tenacity to seek it out and, and, and love it up and nurture it. Because we're not, most of us aren't, going to be able to get fear gone. And if we start, you know, if we think that we can live completely fearless lives, then we are those brave souls. But if we think for a minute, you know, we have these fears or whatever, I still have a fear of abandonment. But let me tell you, it used to be in a gallon container. It's now about this big. It's And it's also contained and it's put in its place because it's an old thing and it's part of my past and it's whatever it is. But I've, I've taken the lessons put those into the experience file and allow those to grow my life. Because if I went to the fear vessel every time and kept going back and digging through that, I'd lose the lessons that I could possibly learn. And I'd lose the creative outlet that I could use as well for solving it. It was when I did that, that I started to get the freedom from that fear and was able to step into the solutions. Does that make sense to you? So I love this part. There also, have you ever heard of this, that grace under pressure is what courage is? It's grace under pressure. And it's the thing that we need in our lives so that we can step into the next possible phase of what we want in our lives. We get held back with our fear. We also get held back by um, not knowing and acknowledging our own creativity because the creativity is the thing that's going to help us out and give us those solutions. So that's number five. Number six is you don't need permission from anyone to do this. You don't. You don't need a guru coming into your world and just saying, hey, you know, let's fix this or let's do this or anything. You don't need that for special magic. The special magic that you have is the special magic that was given to you. It's the reason you have curly hair and I don't, or I have somewhat curly hair, if you know what I'm saying. It's in your DNA. It's who you are. It's a part of you. And whether or not you develop that, it's totally 100% up to you. But I will tell you this, that developing your own creativity is the way to get to the place of magic. And curiosity is in front of the pack. Curiosity helps to develop the creativity because you're asking the right questions and starting to get to the solutions. And that's just magical. And that's the kind of magic that we get to live with and we get to experience, which leads to an incredible, vibrant life. You know, I always say we don't want a big fan. I don't want a big fancy life. I don't. I just want the life that is going to be comfortable, that's going to be welcoming and loving to the people that I care about in my life. You know, this is why in full bloom, the people that I care about in my life who are ticket holders to full bloom are going to be in my home. I want them here. This is why we bought this house. This is one of the number one reasons we bought this house and the boat, all of it. I had a vision in my mind of what could be. That's creativity right there. That's my vision board. Those are my goals. And it's all woven together. And it started with curiosity. And it moved into creativity and it was solution oriented and it happened in less time than I thought it would. Isn't that glorious? 
Isn't that just the most beautiful thing ever? I love this. So number seven is fall madly in love with your own creativity. Okay. Just delight in what's in there. Even if it's just the smallest little thing, when you start to poke and prod and you start to allow for it and give space and give time and, and look for this, your reticular activating system is going to go crazy and say, okay, you want solutions? Let's go get them. You know, instead of saying, instead of shutting it all down, like get smart with the doors, you are opening the doors and saying, let's go, let's find some of these things. And everything gets activated at one time. And that, my friends, is delightful. And you will love it. It's so incredible. Um, the thing is, again, and I will tell you, just back to that whole thing. Creativity is the act of turning new and imaginative ideas into reality. And that can come anything like my new and imaginative idea for dealing with this office hire somebody who this is their gift, you know? And to me, when I thought of this, it was just like, whoa, my head just blew up. Like, I don't have to do this. No, you don't. And it would be better that you didn't because if you spent your time on the things that you're good at, Leanne, and allow other people to roll with their talent and their gifts, it's a double blessing because I'm going to be able to pay this woman who is going to be able to do this work is going to straighten things out, straighten me out. And it, that's a love fest right there. That is a love fest. That's how we get things done. And so tomorrow we're going to put all this stuff together. We are going to put a lot of this stuff together. We're going to get to the place, uh, not tomorrow, I should say Saturday, tomorrow's uh, Q&A. And by the way, tomorrow's Q&A will be recorded earlier in the day. Okay, because I take some some of Friday off and do some things with Mark. That's kind of our date afternoon. Probably I'm going to go get a manicure and a, and a pedicure, which I have not had in two in some years, more than two years now. I think it's time. So I'm going to do that. I'm excited about that. That's my creative life right there. And, you know, Saturday, we're going to go into the weeds on how magic impacts our soul and impacts the quality of our lives. I think you're going to enjoy it. I really do. And I hope you show up on Saturday. And one last thing, start sharing our stuff. If you would forward your emails to somebody who you think would be a, a good match in our group, um, share these videos if they've meant something to you and helped you along the way, because this is how we bring more people into our community. We're selective about that. I think God is selective about that and brought just the right people in there. But we would love to expand the borders of our hearts and love more people up. That's what we do. All right. That's today's show. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you for the gala. Did we have fun? <laughs> we had an absolute blast. But right now, your next, your next assignment is, really, will you do me a favor and start creatively thinking about how could I get to full bloom? How could I get to full bloom? How can I make this happen? Because there is a lot of women going. There's a lot of carpools going. There is a lot of sharing of rooms. Once you get here, your food's handled. So I don't know. If I were you, I'd start thinking about that. Deal? Peace be with you. I'll see you um, tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. You can find us on YouTube on the Saving Dinner channel or on the Saving Dinner Facebook page. Check back daily for new episodes, Monday to Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. If you missed the live show, you can watch the replay. Until next time, pinkies up.